Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in, and today, guys, we're gonna do our weekly housing market update. And I'm gonna show you guys that new homes right now are absolutely being slashed as far as their home prices. Now, here's the thing, guys. What Lennar especially has been doing recently is selling their homes to rental organizations. But here's the good news. Those rental organizations are actually taking a step back out of the housing market. And that's especially important, guys, because that means that inventory is going to be left for people like us that are on the sidelines. But not only Lennar, Open Door is also in dire straits as well as a result of their flipping business being absolutely wrecked. So today, guys, we're going to go over what's going on with Lennar and my local housing market, Open Door. Then I'm going to go over to talk about all things interest rates. We're going to look at the 30-year fixed rate mortgages. We're going to look at the 10-year. We're going to look at the poll. Now, after that, I'm going to finally start telling you guys a little bit more details about my home purchasing journey. So towards the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what my first step is now that I'm ready to start preparing to purchase homes. And here's the thing, you guys, what I just said is preparing to purchase homes. So I'm going to show you guys where I'm at with that, kind of explain what it takes to get qualified for a home. Now, after that, guys, I'm going to do this week's member shout outs and mad love to you guys. I had to go through every single video and we had multiple people that actually had a first place comment. So I really appreciate that guys. Now, before I continue this video, please, you already know, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, shoot me a comment below, hit notifications and help me push this message, share this content. But regardless guys, let's get started. But I really wanna point out one thing before I jump into Lennar, Right now, the cancellation rates for new home builds are absolutely unprecedented. In Texas alone, we're over 35%. But also guys, in the Southwest, cancellation rates on new home building is up to 45%. So these guys are getting absolutely gutted, y'all. And that's just gonna get worse and worse for them as we move into 2023 and as demand continues to get crushed, as the Federal Reserve continues to do quantitative tightening. So what I'm saying, you guys, is the housing market crash is firing on all cylinders. So now let's dig into some top companies. Let's go into my local MLS and let's give some shout outs. Let's start now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on Lennar's website and I'm just going to give you guys a breakdown of my local housing market here in Houston, just so we can try to figure out exactly how many houses Lennar has right now in my local housing market. But I wanted to point out some massive price cuts right now, guys. And I just, you know, and I easily went onto Lennar's website. You guys can see here that Austin, Lennar's actually cut one house $158,000, taking it from a $600,000 house back down to a $450,000 house. And again, you guys, that's Austin. I'll get to my local housing market in a second. Now here's Boise. Again, this is Lennar. Now, as you can see, they had a price cut here in Boise of $70,000, taking the home from 539 to 469. Now here we also have Phoenix. I wanted to hop into Phoenix to show you that there are massive price cuts going on in Phoenix as well. Now this house, as you can see, was cut from 686 to 589, making this a price cut of $96,000 from Lennar in Phoenix. Here's one more, y'all. This is in Salt Lake City. Now this house was cut from 860,000 down to 785,000. That represents a price cut of $75,000. All right, so now I'm back on their website guys and you guys can do this yourself for any metro areas that you're interested in but what i want to do now is show you how in danger lennar is from going bankrupt and from having to liquidate or fire sell their inventory so we're only going to look at houston okay so i'm going to put in the houston texas market right here and let's see how many total homes that lennar has now as you guys can see here they have 642 homes in Houston right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these 642 homes and I'm gonna multiply it by the median sales price for new construction as according to Fred. And you guys can see that there's new building. If you look at this map here on the right, you can see that there's new building all over the place in Houston. I mean, Houston's growing like crazy. I, I, I personally absolutely love Houston, you guys. I know I'm a realtor. I'm not trying to convince you to move to Houston. I'm just saying personally, 
I love it here, but let's see what the median sales price is for homes. Okay, so here's Fred economic data, average sales price for new homes sold in the United States. So you can see right now as of November 23rd, and this will update probably next week, y'all, but the median sales price for new construction right now is $544,000. Now what I'm gonna do is just pull up a calculator. I'm gonna take 642 homes that are just in Houston, just my metro area. We have a lot of metro areas. So I'll take 642 homes times the average median sales price of 544,000. So let's see how much total inventory Lennar has in my local housing market. So astonishing. In just Houston, guys, in just Houston, do you see this number right here? Okay, do y'all see this number? Let me put this in perspective on, you know, how big that number is exactly. $350 million worth of product right now in Lennar's hands. And here's the crazy thing, guys. Property taxes are due right around the corner. So for all of the homes that Lennar has completed, they're fixing to start paying property taxes on those homes. So as we continue to go into 2023, here's the thing with Lennar, they're still building. Okay, they're still permitting SFRs. They're still trying to build. And here's the really amazing thing, y'all. Now, obviously, you guys probably have heard the rumors. Actually, they're not rumors, but Lennar and many other builders are trying to sell, you know, their excess inventory to rental organizations. But the thing is, is those rental organizations are taking a step back. So that $350 million worth of homes that Lennar has just in Houston, you guys, now that institutional investors and rental organizations are taking a step back, those homes that they have already completed are just going to sit on the market for longer and longer until Lennar gets so desperate that they cut the prices on the homes even more. And you guys are going to see that happen right before our eyes as we go into 2023. Now, the crazy thing is, is I don't know how their stock is doing so well. Now, I don't want to you know, give any type of stock advice, but you know, Technically, they're not doing too shabby when compared to the overall housing market. But I believe that's a result of delusion in the market, right? I believe that, you know, people aren't paying attention to what's going on with the Federal Reserve and quantitative tightening. But as you guys can see, in just Houston, Lennar is heavily exposed. But I don't want to just stop at Lennar. Let me now show you guys what's going on in my local housing market only only my local housing market as it pertains to open door. Because remember what I'm saying, we're going to get so much inventory and this crash is going to happen as a predominant result of new home builders and investors, specifically flip investors, just like open door. But let me show you what open door is up to in my own local housing market. All right. So let me go to Har here. This is the Houston Association of Realtors. And you guys remember that I found the agent's name that, you know, technically has all of the listings in my local market uh, for open door. So I'm going to paste his name right here where it says find a pro. His name is, you know, Ferris Rashid. And, you know, the very interesting thing that I noticed here, y'all, is there's actually three of the same person. So I don't know if they're trying to hide inventory or whatnot, but let me click this middle one and just show you what's going on in Houston area. So now that I have him up here, what I do is scroll down here. So you guys can see in Houston right now, there is a minimum of 602 active listings for open door. So I, I want you guys to pay attention to that because what we're going to do is we're going to take the median sales price and multiply that by, by 602, just so that we can figure out about how many homes that they own, right? This is one owner. One person owns all of these homes, as you guys can see in this map right here. I mean, this is, this is way too much influence and ability for one company to have because they can easily manipulate the housing market. I mean, that's a fact. But let me go back and show you what the other agents show right here, okay? So let me show you guys what this first one shows. Okay, so the same guy, look at Open Door Brokerage. Let me scroll down and let me show you. Now look at this, I'm gonna add this to the video, y'all. Now this is Dallas. So they own all these houses right here as well in Dallas. And look at this shocking, shocking number. So in Dallas, as far as active listings, and you guys remember that Open Door does not have all their homes that they own on that that are listed in other words so they have a lot more homes than this but you guys can see in dallas astonishing you guys in dallas there's 776 listings okay so 776 listings in dallas 602 listings in houston so now let's figure out what the median sales price is in houston and in dallas and start trying to figure out how many homes 
you know, how much value in homes do they actually have? Because here's the thing, they're going to come crushing down. You guys already know that Open Door has been fined over $60 million for deceiving homeowners over $60 million. So on top of all these fines, now they have a product that no one wants that's declining in value. So do y'all see why I'm saying that Open Door is more than likely they're going to file for chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2023. I don't know that for sure, but I would certainly bet on it as far as a gentleman's bet. I don't want to bet any money, but I'll shake your hand and bet you they're going to file chapter 11 in 2023. I may be wrong, but we'll figure it out. But now let me show you what the median sales price was for Houston and Dallas. Okay, so now in order to determine that, we're going to Redfin median sales price. And as you can see here, I have selected Houston. So the median sales price in Houston is $333,000. So let's pull up a calculator right now and see how much value Open Door has in just Houston. So what I'm going to do is take the 602, which is how many active listings. We're not counting anything that's not active. And then we're going to times that by $333,000 for a total of $200 million worth of property in just Houston. And you guys remember, that's just Houston, but that that's a liability because these houses right here, guys, those are already built unlike new builds. So they're paying full taxes, full HOA, full insurance on, not to mention utilities because they have to have electricity on for people to tour and cleaning fees, right? So they have $200,000. Now, if the average tax rate is two and a half percent, that means they have $5 million that's going to be due in January. Isn't that astonishing? Now let's look at Dallas. All right, guys, now here's Dallas as according to Redfin. This is the median sales price. Now Dallas median sales price is $403,000. So let's pull up a calculator. So what we do is we take the 776 active listings that Open Door currently has in Dallas. That mean, Can you believe how many homes that these guys own? Am I the only one shocked by, I mean, how do they get so much money, right? They're hurting from quantitative tightening. I'll tell you that. So we take 776 times 403,000. That gives us a total of $312 million worth of homes in Dallas. So, you know, do you guys think that they have a billion dollars worth of homes in just Texas? I think that they might. Now that's a lot of real estate. So let's times it by 2% because Dallas has a little bit lower property taxes. I'll go 2%. That means they're going to have an additional tax bill roughly due of $6 million, y'all, in the city of Dallas. So again, here's the biggest problem with what's going on with Open Door or really any flip investor. People don't want to buy houses right now. People are starting to become afraid to buy houses right now. And people are starting to understand that if they wait, more than likely they're going to be able to get a home that's less than what it's valued at right now, maybe 15, 20% less. So here's the thing. Why would anyone want to purchase a home right now unless they have to? Why would anyone want to purchase a home right now if we wait six months, maybe even a year, home prices can be 20% lower. And if the Fed pivots, interest rates may be also lower. So there is so many reasons right now to wait. Again, just for most people, and I understand there's different reasons to buy, but you guys, open door can't sell their products. And like new home builders, they're not set up to hold those homes. They also have very poor financing. Think about what I'm saying. There's so much noise on YouTube. So many people saying there's no more housing market crash. The Fed has pivoted. The thing is, guys, it's not. The crash is happening right before or our eyes. And if anyone says it's not, more than likely they have a hidden agenda or they just don't understand how the housing market works or they're clouded by their desire to succeed. I mean, there are so many things that is telling us wait, right? And I understand well-leveraged buyers, you know, buying versus renting. I understand all the numbers, you know, some people are going to buy, but you know, overall y'all, we need to wait. Now let's hop into the next part of this video, which is everything interest rates. Let's take a look at what Fred economic data updated to right now. Okay. So here, check, check it. Here is Fred 30 year fixed rate mortgage average in the United States. And that's basically Freddie Mac's information. Now you guys can see that it went from 6.33, slightly down by two basis points to 6.31. So essentially y'all, it did remain unchanged, which 
you know, which is basically what I thought. Now, the really big question is, is what's going to happen next week? But I also want to point out this, the last time that rates were this high. So let's talk about the last time the rates were as high as 6.31 and what was happening to median sales price during that time. Because my point is, guys, and, and let me, you know, let me look at you in the eyes when I say this. My point is, is, you know, as more and more inventory comes back and as more and more quantitative tightening happens, more bankruptcies, more businesses going out. Uh, more companies going out of business, higher unemployment. We don't need rates in the 8% to have a housing market crash. We may not even need interest rates in the 7%. Okay. Listen, you know, and listen to what I'm saying very carefully. Home appreciation happened because of two and 3% interest rates. Even a 6% is double where interest rates were before. So it stands to reason. Again, you guys, as soon as we have enough inventory, we, we may not even need interest rates in the six. I believe once things reset, as long as interest rates are 5% or higher, we're going to be able to sustain a housing market with proper fundamentals moving forward. But let me show you the last time interest rates were this high and what happened to median sales price. Let's take a look. Okay, so the last time interest rates were this high was September 29th, okay? So last time this high, September 29th, which was at 6.70. So now let's look at what was going on with median sales price during September, okay? So let's take a look now. So we're going back to Redfin's median sales price and where I've highlighted right here, guys, is essentially what median sales price was doing the last time interest rates hit, you know, hit the mid sixes. So you can see it went down sharply right here. So this is when they went up again right here, you guys. And look at this. So this whole, you know, this whole green highlighted section here is a decline in median sales price. And again, you guys, this, you know, once, I don't know if you guys can see this right here, but this is, you know, it kind of was balancing out and then it started going down sharply. And that's when the rates were in the mid sixes. So, you know, essentially what I'm trying to point out here, y'all, is even if we have interest rates go to the low 6%, it's okay. And the reason that's okay is home prices are still way over priced, right? And not only that, people are in more debt, people have less savings, it's more expensive to live, interest rates are double, right? <laughs> Do y'all see what I'm saying here? Uh, the thing is, is the Federal Reserve can afford to slow down. Okay, that's what I'm saying. They can afford to slow down. I hope they don't because I want to get this out of the way so that we can move on with our lives. But the thing is, is don't freak out if they do slow down is my point. But now let me jump into the 10 year so that we can try to figure out what direction the interest rates are going to go next week. Now, just to make a point here, y'all. Now, I did say that the federal funds rate, which is what the Fed is adjusting, does influence residential mortgage rates, but primarily the federal funds rate influences credit card debt and auto loans. What really corresponds with mortgage rates is actually this 10 year right here. Now you guys can see this 10 year is sitting at about 3.48%. So this essentially week over week has about remain unchanged. It's kind of plateaued. It's gone up and down a little bit y'all, but you know, it's basically stayed the same. So what I want to do is I'm going to shoot out a poll. I want you guys to go to that poll and vote on what you think is going to happen next week based on just this 10 year right here, starting out at 3.48%. Now here's my prediction on what's going to happen. Uh, and again, I think this is a result of the holiday season. I think as soon as the holidays are over, the interest rates are going to go up. But I suspect that interest rates next week are going to be sideways. I'll say down one basis point. Okay, so I think they're going to go down one basis point, essentially remaining unchanged after the holidays. I suspect residential mortgage rates will go up. So if I'm in the process of purchasing a home, I'm locking my rate right now and not gambling any further. Do y'all understand? Now let's take a look at the results from the last poll and see how my viewers did. Y'all look at this. 64% said higher. Y'all, it was lower. Y'all, it was lower. How did y'all miss that? But we had 2.6 thousand votes. 64% of people unfortunately got it wrong. 36 got it right. Now, you know, it's, it's hard to say what's going to happen next week again, you guys, because you know, it is just hard, but I'm saying specifically because we haven't passed the holidays. That's the only reason I'm saying 
down slightly by one basis point. But I wouldn't be surprised on if it went up slightly. Uh, I think it's going to be a slight movement. I do not think it's going to be a good movement. But after you guys watch this video, do me a favor, go to my community tab and vote for what you think is going to happen after we receive the next update. So anyways, guys, now what I want to do is explain where I'm at in my purchasing journey. Okay, so Listen to me very carefully. I am not saying to purchase right now, but I am trying, you know, but what I am saying is, is you're going to want to prepare to purchase well in advance. Now, what I have done is I've taken my step one as far as my purchasing journey. And step one is this for me. Okay. And I, you know, in my opinion is, is everyone should start here. And that is with getting qualified for a mortgage. Okay. So let's talk about that briefly guys and what it takes to get qualified for a mortgage and what you guys should do. Now, first of all, interview a few companies, interview many companies, you guys, because here's the reality of the industry. A, you know, a great loan officer is priceless. If you're just going out there shopping interest rate and nickel and diming, you're going to get what you pay for. I promise you that. I had to go off the other day on a loan officer. I have a client and their loan officer was essentially lying to him and I had to roast him. The guy was in the business for 25 years and I caught him in so many lies. Disgusting. So anyways, you guys, I'm not trying to scare you. What I'm saying is, is don't just jump on the first thing that comes in, that comes in your view, right? Make a quality decision on who you're working with and not just interest rate, quality of service as well. Now, here's what you have to do when taking that first step of qualification. And I'm going to also tell you why it's so important. Now, the reason why I went and got qualified is I wanted a loan officer and underwriter to review my income, my credit, and my assets, specifically my income, because I know my credit's good and I know I have assets. So it's really my income calculations. Now, what I have to do is, is I send all of my income documentation into a lender, which includes recent paycheck stubs, the last two years of tax returns, the last two years of W-2s. Social, sec uh, Social Security and driver's license, two months of bank statements, all of the pages, and any type of special circumstances that's going on. So I send all of that paperwork into the loan officer. Now, before I do that, I complete a loan application. And what I wanna do, guys, is I'm thinking about going live to make a video for you guys, just to show you how a loan application works. And specifically, what I wanna show you is how debt to income ratio works in conjunction with payments, right? Credit card or vehicle or whatever monthly payment. So I really want to show you how DTI works. That'll be a different video. Now, now that I've done the loan application, now that I've sent my documents into the lender, what the lender is going to do now is they're going to update the loan application. Because remember this, the loan application is only as good as the person that's completing it, right? So the more you give your loan officer, essentially the better. So the loan officer re-updates the application, matching the qualifying documents that I sent in. Now, after the loan officer has updated the loan application, they should then run the file through something called automated underwriting system or AUS. And typically a loan officer has two options to run someone's file through underwriting. Usually they can run it through what's called LP or DU. So LP stands for loan prospector. DU stands for desktop underwriter. One's Freddie Mac, one's Fannie Mae. So after that, they run through automated underwriting and hopefully with a little luck and a little hard work, you get an actual accept through automated underwriting. So that's one really important thing, y'all, is to have your file ran through automated underwriting before you're ready to purchase. And let me explain why. Guess what's coming up? the new year. If I need to file my taxes in a certain way, and because I have Schedule C self-employment income, maybe I don't take as many tax deductions so that I can show more qualifying income on my tax return. So there's a lot of benefits of getting qualified right now. So not only will I be able to restructure coming into the new year, I can handle any potential problems. I can uh, pay certain debt off to adjust my DTI, but also guys, I have the reassurance knowing that I'm a well-qualified buyer and the really, really two, two really important things is my loan officer can now give me monthly payment 
and out of pocket expense for any properties that I'm interested in. And I would strongly suggest that anyone that's looking for houses before you step foot in a house, make sure you understand how much it's going to cost you, right? And that's why you need payment and that's why you need out of pocket expense. Now, here's the thing you guys, you and I've been getting a lot of emails. You guys know I stepped out of sales, okay? And, and, and I've been getting your emails. I'll let you know when to email me again. I'm sorry I haven't been responding to your emails, but you know the type of person I am, guys, I can't sell something and I can't do something that I don't believe in. I can't. I can't do it. I have to believe in it, and I don't believe in purchasing real estate right now. So I've essentially turned my back to, you know, to all sales activity. I'm not listing houses. I have helped a couple people buy houses, but I have went off on them, and I've said it's too soon. You're going to lose value, and they're like, Travis, I'm well qualified. I don't want to rent. I'm like, fine, whatever. I'm losing sleep over it. But regardless, guys, I'm strongly suggesting that you start with qualification. I have already got qualified, so I am pre-qualified, but I want to be qualified for more. So more than likely, I'm going to file my Schedule C or self-employment income for 2022, and I'm going to show uh, additional money. And that additional money is going to allow me to qualify for a higher loan. Now, what I'm going to do because I know you guys want someone to trust, okay? I'm gonna link someone that I use for my, you know, essentially to review my documents, someone that I have worked with for 10 years. Now, obviously I also reviewed all of my own documents, right? I've, you know, I'm a loan officer, right? So I review all of my stuff, but I'm gonna list someone that, again, that I trust, that I work with. Her name is Jennifer Rader. If you guys have any questions about mortgages in the state of Texas, Reach out to her. Her information is going to be in my description and let her know that you were referred by me. And again, you guys, I'm not saying to go buy a house right now. I'm just saying, get ready, right? Be prepared because here's the thing. What's luck? In my opinion, luck is opportunity and preparation. Opportunity doesn't matter unless you're prepared to take advantage. And that's my point. So as I continue to do housing market update videos, I'm going to have a segment on each of those videos to let you guys know where I'm at in my journey to purchase a home. But right now, you guys, it's time for the member shout out. All right, guys. So this week we had multiple people that commented for first. So I just want to give a thank you. The first one is WTH. So we got a first place comment here. So mad love to you, WTH. Definitely appreciate that. Also, my my boy Johnny I fly made the first place comment list as well Johnny I don't know if he's gonna be the champion but Johnny you made it brother thank you and obviously guys this guy is trolling hardcore he understands what's going on this is a good guy he's very smart now we also have my boy Scrog with a first place comment as well mad love to you Scrog and my man Sheldon Sheldon Thank you, brother. You got first place comment as well about eight days ago, and he's got the golden mindset. Thank you, man. That means he's been a uh, member of my channel for over a month. It's a it's nine nine cents a month, you guys. So mad love to you, Sheldon. I definitely appreciate the support there, brother. Now look at this usual suspect here. Look at this usual suspect, Dooster. Mad love. Welcome back. Thank you for stepping up, brother, and and getting a first place comment. Appreciate that tremendously, brother. Also, my man Kevin got a first place comment. Do y'all see how far I had to go back? I went back to like every single video in the last 10 days. So Kevin, mad love to you. I definitely appreciate you. Bernice, Bernice, mad love. Thank you so much. You got a first place comment as well. I definitely appreciate that, Bernice. And lastly, we have Shilpa. Shilpa, I appreciate it. Love you. I hope you're enjoying your coffee. I definitely appreciate the first place comment. So, so now the question is, is who's in first place? And here's what I'm gonna say. The person in first place actually got first place comment three times. And you guys know I haven't done a house market update video in like two weeks. I went on vacation, but first place winner goes to my man, Grog. Brother, mad love to you. You guys don't know how much it means to me with all of the support I'm getting. So mad love to you. You are the first place champion, the first place comment champion, sir. Well done, mad love to you. All right, guys, so moving forward, I'm gonna continue the first place comment championship okay so keep doing the first place but i'm also going to start doing a shout out to whoever does the best comment so what i'm going to do right now guys is i'm going to create a you know i'm going to recreate a post in my community section and i'm going to ask you guys to say something really motivational about the housing market and whoever has the most votes is going to be next week's comment champion because i love the first place but you guys say some 
absolutely great things. And I want to highlight your genius and I want to highlight your guys's love and all of the appreciation that I have for you. So look out for that post. As soon as you're done with this video, go vote on the interest rates and go spit some skills and some insights on the post that I make for top comment. Now, other than that, guys, I really, really appreciate you following along this journey with me. If you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I wish you luck and I hope you win.